This I think is a Miami Classic wearing a Glock red gun. Yeah. Officer Jared, what's up? Good to see you again. Those are live magazines on that side because I took my G19 out of it for this short training video. Yep. I do like a shoulder holster. I, I run them all the time, usually under the shirt. Yeah, so. There's a time and a place, you know, I, I, I never say never. I, I've never actually worn one myself, but um, because I, it's not a common law enforcement tool mm -hmm. here in the US, but um, there are times and places and I've seen them used effectively all in different parts of the world, so yeah. Yeah. The video here is just to give you a couple of ideas of how to retain the gun in the, in the shoulder holster. Mm -hmm. uh, it will harken back to what we said in the outside the waistband retention video, yes. which was about 40 minutes long we did. Yeah, so I'm not gonna repeat any of that mm -hmm. really to any degree. It's just a matter of looking at the, some of the nuances of the different location of the firearm and that first step of retaining, that, and first retention step of not letting them pull it out, getting your base, so on and so forth. Okay, I, I do wanna emphasize what you say at the beginning of that video, essay situation awareness and Absolutely. really knowing what's going on yeah that's your first line of defense you know it's just it's, especially if you're carrying a firearm situation awareness should be at another level oh great here's our friend enos what's up dude nothing much just here yeah we're back Providing. at the gym thank you for Providing. showing up and being the sparring partner today we cannot do it without you seriously we showed up last week we didn't have enos and it just this wasn't gonna work this wasn't right Jared was crying even yeah. if someone else was filming the camera i couldn't do what I you guys do <laughs> So it's a good team. We're glad to have you back. Take it away, OJ. Yeah. So just real quick, again, I'm, uh, um, refer back to the, uh, the the other video that we did on weapon retention because that really outlines a little bit more detail some of these principles. And I say a little bit more detail. It's like a half an hour video for what I would normally teach in two days. Okay. So, um, but it is more detail than what we're going to get into here. The what if we're going to address here is what if the location of your firearm is now in a shoulder holster, okay? And the first step is just going to be the retention of how do I, how do I maintain the gun um, to prevent him from pulling it out that gives me the time that I need to get him away from me, okay? Um, so, um, Enos is going to grab, grab onto the gun, okay? So the first thing, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create what we call a, um, a monkey trap. One thing that I like to do is because I need his arm to be as straight as possible. It doesn't have to be completely straight, but as soon as he's grabbed onto that, I'm going to be pushing and pulling like that. See how I come to the back of his elbow? And I, put, and I basically push and pull, and that there may be a, a strike right into the neck, okay? Maybe my, my elbow or ideally my forearm because it gives me more reach because I, I basically straighten out the arm. See that? I, pull and I push. What am I, why am I grabbing the back of his elbow? Is because if he's trying to do a good, quick grab and run, if I've got the back of his elbow, it's gonna prevent that. If I grab down here and he's real oily or slippery or something, it may just slip out. So I grab here and then I go into, immediately into a, what we call a monkey trap um, retention position. Okay? So this position here, what I'm doing is, um, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just doing this, okay? I'm closing, I'm, I'm using that as kind of a guillotine and I'm closing and I'm using that bony part of my, of the top of my wrist to basically cut into his arm. So I'm here and then I scoot over and I, I'm, my hand is kind of coming up and it's locking his hand in there. And we call this a monkey trap um, because it's like in, in some Southeast Asian countries where they catch monkeys to eat, a lot of times they'll use a coconut, they'll put a hole in the top, put a piece of bread or something in there, the monkey reaches in and then you come out with your club, and the monkey's trying to run away with the coconut stuck to his hand, he's not running very fast. He won't let go of that food, but if he did let go of the food, he'd be able to escape. So it's the same thing here, it's a monkey trap. If he's holding onto that gun, um, then he's not gonna get out of this, okay? So that's what I'm, that's my first thing. So again, he's grabbed onto the gun, boom. I may go, I may go here, and then I just slide straight into that, okay, into that monkey trap. Hey, even if the gun was out of the holster, I'm, I've got it locked in there. Can I stop you one sec? Sure. One thing I love about what you're doing, and I want to make it a point to the audience, is you are getting in his face. Yeah. I think the natural inclination of someone uh, grabbing your gun is guys will try to run away. But notice Jared is doing exactly the opposite. Correct. He's meeting the threat and getting, watch how he pulls him in. That's his best chance to control his gun. He is not running away, quite the opposite. He's in a fight. Yeah. When you're at I this love distance, that. Um, think counter ambush, counter ambush tactics. Your best chance of survival is to fight into the threat, not to try and recoil and run away from the threat. And at this distance, if I try and move backwards, he's literally going to get me on my heels and I'm going to fall to the ground. And it could actually extract the holster out of the, 
or the gun out yeah, the holster. Absolutely. I may fall to the ground and he's got the gun in his hand. So good. If I'm moving backwards, I'm not in a good balanced position. I need to meet resistance with resistance. Even if he was a bigger and stronger guy and he's pushing me backwards, I'm still moving into that. Okay, and I've and I'm and it keeps me in a in a good um, a good tight position. Notice his feet, dudes. This is what we talked about with OJ years ago. He always goes to a really broad, strong yep. stance where yes. it's stable. Yes. Now, and things to be, in that regard, things to be cognizant of. Right now, I'm stretching him here, and so I know what he's doing. The the, the thing that you got to be aware of when you get into deep bases like this is if he was not stretched up and he was allowed to bend over, he's going to grab onto that onto that leg, and I'm going down. Okay. So um, when you do get into those deep bases. Like I, like I like to do, just be aware of that of that leg. Because if he tries to grab onto that leg, I need to be aware that that's there, and I may draw that back and go bang straight into a knee strike. Okay, that may be a setup for that. So just be aware of that. But if you don't get a good base, you're more likely to end up on the ground, and which is an unfavorable position, no matter how good a ground fighter you are in a, in a in this type of environment. And we're just assuming one on one. Exactly. Yeah. If he has a couple buddies, it gets a lot more interesting. Maybe he's got a knife in his other hand or something yeah. like that. So, you know, you just never know. So, um, so he's grabbed onto that. Again, I've, I've, I've gathered, I've stretched, and I've monkey trapped his arm. From here, we're going to walk through the same processes that we did before. Right? So it may be something that we talked about striking. What strike do I have? If I move my hand away from his face, his hand might, I might not be stretched out like it is now, but that may be my first bang right there. Throw those elbows. My knee is in a great position right now to just boom, just to drive multiple knees. It, my crush stomps, my oblique kicks can be possible from this position. Okay, uh, my head butts, okay? eye gouges. So if I have to, you don't want to spend a lot of time doing that stuff because I want to get them away from me. Um, if nothing else is working, I may be just focusing on strikes. So, um, so that's the first thing. I'm giving my verbal commands. Let go, my guy. Let go, my guy. Bang. Bang, and now I'm going to do a quick angle and circle. Okay? Now I may do it just to kind of get him to let go of the gun, so maybe just like this. Okay. Right. You see what it's doing to his wrist there? Now if I was, wanted to do that and actually intentionally get him onto the ground and control him, then after I've done my monkey trap, again, we talked about this in the other video, I'm not going to move this direction, right? because that puts me into the uh, snuggle with the struggle position. We don't want to snuggle with the struggle, right? Um, so here, I may be looking at pulling down like that, okay, as I turn the other direction. That would be an angle. An angle and a circle, okay, down to the ground. And then I may be looking to turn, keep bending, and get them off my, off my weapon. Gotcha. Right? So same principles that we, that we showed before, keep it simple, you know, um, and just kind of flow through, through the same processes. This, this, you just got to train these things because the angles of his arm may make a difference in, in what's going on here. Okay, uh, so. There is a difference I notice. You're not trying to trap the gun in that holster now. It's, it's no. So because that's really kind of moving. It's all over the place. Exactly. What you're going for is the assailant. The hand. The hand you're, go, you're locking him in. Locking the hand in. Exactly. Yeah. That's hand. a big difference from our other retention Correct. techniques. Correct. Yeah. It's just, this is just moving too much to really. It's uh, not yeah, locked down. If I'm going to put pressure into me, I don't have a lot of strength like that. That's going to be my best bet. If for some reason the gun came out, he can't. The danger, the danger of that is the environment, who's around me that he might shoot. He's not going to be able to shoot me because he, it's, there's not enough movement with the hand. Let's hold on to the, the gun right there. He can turn around here. He's not going to be able to get that pointed at me. Okay, but he might be able to get pointed at you. Okay, so you just got to be aware that just because he can't shoot me doesn't mean he can't shoot other people around. So mm -hmm. if he did get it out of the holster, but it's not likely he will once I've got that trapped because he's got to be able to get right. some movement to be. And, I've, and I'm taking away that movement. What gun is that, by the way? So this is um, a cert pistol. Okay, NLT next level training this is my go-to um, uh, training pistol for a couple of reasons. One is that you can, you know, in addition to be able to do, do practice your mag changes, it has a, a laser. So you can, you can see, not just for, for training your, your, your trigger pull, but um, you can actually, if I'm doing this drill and I'm moving away from him and I have to engage him, I can actually see where my shots are going. Okay? Okay. So I, it gives, adds a little bit more realism than just uh, a blue gun. Okay? And, yeah. and there's a lot of interactive targets you can get to just kind of train your accuracy with um, this type I of I have something similar to that. I don't know if it's that, it's that brand. There's a couple of companies making it. This is this is my again my go-to. Is that they're um, great product, great company. But there's yeah, there's other ones out there. Right on. 
All right. Uh, thank you so much. Absolutely. Yeah, Short so. video on how to retain your gun in a shoulder holster, dude. So, yeah. So again, go back, like Jared said, and look at the other video. Yeah, where we talk that. in detail yeah. as much as time allows. One of the things we didn't even talk about here was, which we talked about in the other video, is if I have another knife I can go to. Yes. That may be, yeah. Right. That may be what I'm doing to transition. So yeah. yeah. Look at the other video. And you're still there. advocating offside uh, knife carry, blade carry, right? Yes. Now. Even in a shoulder holster. For a shoulder holster, this is where that, uh, like I spoke about in the other video, if I can reach it with both hands, especially if I have a shoulder holster, then that's better. Because you see, say I reached that with my right hand. Mm -hmm. If it was somewhere that I couldn't reach it with my right hand, then it's not going to be for a shoulder holster. I want to be able to reach it with both hands. And if, if anything, probably the dominant hand at this point is going yeah. to be my, my, my ideal. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Wrapping it up. Nothing fancy project. Thank you, Enos, again. Yeah, Appreciate it. Back at the gym, OJ teaching some retention techniques. Yeah, Stay fit. Take care. Take care.